So welcome, good people, welcome. Uh, this is ATB Level 1 CASNEP, Introduction to Financial Accounting, and it's an April 2022 paper. We'll be tackling question one here. Uh, there are already some writings, so I'll just go through it very fast. Explain three qualities of useful accounting information needed for decision making. Explain three qualities of useful account information needed for decision making. The three qualities we have uh, reliability, we have relevance, reliability, sorry, reliability, we have relevance, we have uh, understandability, understandability, and lastly, we have comparability. Comparability, those are the four. Uh, actually, there are four major ones, but this question only needs three, so you can pick any three from this. Reliability, relevance, understandability, and comparability. Reliability simply means that uh, uh, somebody can, uh, basically, there's a lot of trust on the information that you provide. If there is trust, then it means somebody can fully or wholeheartedly uh, depend on what you have presented to him for decision making. That is what we mean by reliability. The information that you present is trusted, is fair, is accurate. If it's inaccurate or if it's not fair uh, to all the parties or if it is uh, untrustworthy, then it means nobody can depend on that information for decision making. Relevance means that that information can actually be put into use, can be put into use. That's what we mean by relevance. So, you know, you can supply information that is insignificant. Insignificant means that it really doesn't add or, uh, no, there, there, there's nothing missing whether you provide that information or not. But significant information is key to decision making. It determines how you are going to make the decision. That's what we mean by relevance. The information you provide should be significant, should be able to influence the decision making. And you can see we're talking about it should be necessary, it should be needed. Why should it be needed? Because it should, uh, it should have the capability to influence the decision making. Then at understandability, one should be able to comprehend and get the inner meaning. You know, sometimes you can just push a lot of information and nobody, you know, like when you talk about financial statements, can somebody get meaning out, out of these financial statements? Are they in a comprehensible form? If they're not in a comprehensible form, somebody will just see, they'll just be figures. But if the information has been put in such a way that somebody can draw meaning from that information, then we say that uh, that information is understandable it is user friendly that is very key because it is through this quality that we, we make meaning out of any information that our accountants will possibly use comparability we should be able to compare with other firms after all uh, accounting is about businesses presenting the information and uh, this should um, whatever it is that i present should be almost similar to what somebody else is presenting to what somebody else is presenting to what somebody else is presenting so they should always be similar so that we can get a lot more meaning from our performance levels otherwise if everybody does his or her stuff his or her way then at the end of the day there will be no meaning again to that information that we are talking about at least after we have all worked on our work that work should be able to somebody should be able to read compare with his or her work or compare with the best or compare with the worst or compare with the previous year performance and get some, uh, you know, some insights into uh, the future. So comparability, very important. That means that there should be some level of uniformity, uniformity and conformity. And in fact, it is this uh, characteristic that basically uh, uh, encourages the observation of the standards. So we have bodies that whose main responsibility, responsibility is to come up and enforce those, the standards which are used so that at the very end, anybody who comes across accounting information can make some meaning uh, from that information. 
So, these, I think, are very important qualities. Three qualities of useful account information needed for decision making. These are very key relevance, reliability, understandability, and comparability. Then we have number two, outline four benefits of using EFT, electronic fund transfer when making payments to suppliers compared to check. Check is in paper form, and check takes basically two days to, for clearance to take place. So if I give you a check today, uh, and you bank it the same day, it will take you like two days to, re to get the value out of that check, to realize, to get the cash. So it takes like two days for the clearance process. Uh, while EFT, EFT is almost immediately, especially if you do it before uh, some time, I think 12 or 2, it will be almost the same day. Almost the same day. And it can, in fact, EFT takes hours to reflect in the other person's account. And uh, again, uh, you know, the, the now, from just that information, what I've just explained, there are so many benefits that come with EFT. We talk of uh, speed, of course. We talk of, uh, you know, safety. Because for EFT, there's no paperwork. It is the person who goes and instructs the bank to remit this money to your account. So there's, we don't have that paperwork. We don't have cases of uh, these uh, returned checks because of insufficient funds. We don't have uh, cases of returned, you know, the, 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 this one, defacing, where you issue somebody with a document and after some, you know, something might happen that document. It might tear, it might get lost. We don't have all those cases. Because for EFT, you just walk to your, to your bank and you instruct the bank, pay this account and they deposit money straight into that account. It doesn't have to go through all these other uh, processes. So speed of transaction, very fast with EFT, convenience. The other person doesn't have to, you know, you know, for a check, we say, go, collect that check, come back, take the check to the bank. We don't have all that and wait for two days. For EFT, it is the other, the, 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 the payer who simply walks to his bank or calls his bank and, you know, the whole process is necessary, is initiated and it takes place. Security, you don't have uh, paperwork to carry along with you. Amount of money, huge. Again, for EFT, you can transact huge amounts of money. For checks, we have a uh, maximum you can go, which is uh, 1 million. EFT, you can go. It can be 10 million, 5 million, you are free to transact even those huge amounts so long as that, that direct transfer to somebody else's account record keeping and trails for uh, the, the, the EFT perfect because the bank will have the statement it will give you the statement and in fact the bank statement is more reliable than any other because they do reconciliations every day so the chances of it being inaccurate are very low it's less expensive. You don't have to send somebody. You don't have to waste a lot of fuel going to collect checks and you know all those messengerial duties. They are not there, so it's very cheap at the end of, of the day. Especially if we are talking about collecting a check from a very far off place. Uh, accuracy, uh huh. The level of accuracy very high because we are dealing with the bank direct and the transfer will take place almost immediately. We said that the banks do reconciliations almost on a daily basis. And like a check where you'll write and then after four days, five days, one week, three weeks, you are told that it has bounced because maybe the debt was written wrongly. So these are just some of the advantages. There are so many other advantages. You might want to do more exercises, uh, more research on that. Explain five end users of accounting information indicating clearly their interest, their areas of interest. These are users of accounting information. Now we have so many users of accounting information. Managers use accounting information for decision making, for planning, for control function. I think we cannot overemphasize any of this. Planning is about preempting the future. It's uh, pre preempting the future. It's about predicting the future. It's about um, uh, to trying to come up with standards. But where do we come up with these standards? You don't just see it and then they come from nowhere. We, they come from the account information, the historical account information. So we look at our past. Based on our past, we predict, we project the future. So planning, very much possible. Then after planning, we follow it up with control. 
control is where we come up with, uh, in fact, one of the items of planning, which is very important, are budgets. That manage, and managers work very closely with budgets. Budgets is a one, it's actually one of the tools of uh, planning. And uh, budget goes hand in hand with control. Because we check the actual expenditure and we compare this actual expenditure with the anticipated, with the budgeted expenditures or actual income with the budgeted income. So you see planning and control go hand in hand. Decision making, it is from the previous information, past data that will help us to uh, to make decisions on how to face the future, whether to buy or not to buy, you know. We need some information that will guide us and account information comes in handy. Owners, of, uh, owners they'll want to know if the firm is making profits. Uh, they'll also want to know the financial position of the business, the assets versus the liabilities. This is very important to know if the firm is a going concern or if it's not a going concern. And also for decision making, whether to continue injecting money in that business or not to uh, continue injecting money on that business. Customers will want uh, this uh, accounting information to check if the firm in question is financially stable. There are some customers who don't want to be, uh, to be, to be, you know, once they, 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 they start using your products, it has to be continuous. The moment they stop using your products and turn to other suppliers, it might be disastrous for them. So there's a lot of loyalty that they expect. And uh, they expect a lot of continuity. So in such like cases, they'll always want to make sure that they are giving their business to a business that is a going concern. Business that will be there tomorrow. Business that will be able to support their, 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 their requirements. So how do, you get, how do they get to be sure? It's through the financial information. Again, they'll want to know uh, if uh, they'll want to check on the, on, the, on the client, on the business information, so to know if uh, the business can possibly sell or offer services to them on credit. Not all customers pay. Uh, uh, cash, especially these big customers. So they want to see is this firm able to sell to us on credit and still stay afloat? Will we have inconvenienced them by staying with their money? So they will want to know before they engage you. Otherwise, it will be very unfair for them to engage you, to take you, to, 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 to ask for you to supply to, to them goods and then they don't pay you for three months, and then you, your business collapses because of them. So they'll want to check to see if you are financially stable to, sell, to be able to support the, their position or to sell goods to them on credit, uh, uh, credit terms. Yeah, we've said they'll want to know if uh, you are a going concern so that they don't uh, start business with you and then tomorrow you are not there. Suppliers, they'll want to know if you pay promptly. Are you a prompt payer? Most suppliers will prefer uh, supplying goods to, 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 to customers who will pay promptly. They'll want to know financial standing uh, to make a decision if they can supply goods to you on credit. Are you stable enough for them to supply goods to you on credit? Will you pay them promptly? Those are some of the questions that will be on the supplier's mind. Government. Taxes. Are you trustworthy? Are you truthful in your declaration of taxes? So they might want to check your books to see if you are actually uh, remitting the correct amounts of taxes. So that's one of the key reasons. In fact, uh, maintaining books of accounts, it's not a, a luxury thing. It's a requirement by the government that all businesses must maintain book of accounts because the government is a key beneficiary especially when it comes to taxes and taxes are paid based on the level of activity so if you can't trace the level of activity in a business then it simply means that you are uh, not in a position to to, to, to to pay taxes that are correct 
of course CSR the government will want to know uh, CSR how far can you support it in terms of CSR so they'll want to check your level of activity and possibly expect they expect some uh, you know uh, giving back to the society they'll also want to check if you are doing a legal business by simply checking your books they'll be able to state whether you are doing legal business or not employees they'll want to know the level job security is it a going concern how do they know if, if the firm is a going concern they check the financial position assets versus liabilities a stable firm will uh, basically by checking the assets and liability you'll, you'll be able to know that this is a stable firm they'll want to know the the, the, the performance levels that is whether the firm is making profits or losses this information is good for them not just for the sake of uh, salary hike but also uh, to motivate them yeah in fact for motivation to motivate because if they are performing well they will be uh, uh, the, the, their morale will also be high and that will push the performance even further and of course to ask for a pay rise potential uh, investors whether to put their money in that business or not they want to know the financial portion of the business they want to know if the business is profitable or not so all those and there are so many other the labor unions the media you know all these will want to like media media stakeholders they want to know because they also offer businesses uh, services. So all these and the public at large, public at large is also a beneficiary of account information, especially for the publicly listed companies. Now, I think that is enough. We've answered even more than what the question wanted uh, because they only wanted five end users and we have come up with so many. So just pick what is good for you and then... Uh, Let's meet in the next question. Remember to subscribe. Join our school. We This is the kind of stuff that you will uh, get there. Uh, enroll now and be part of us. Thank you.